Hi, my name's Tatum. I'm part of the L&D team at phones for You, And I wanted to talk about what phones for You did in the retail space with social learning, but not just to talk about some of the noise that we've created around social and mobile, but also about the journey and how we achieved making phones for You a more connected, engaged organisation. So I just want to paint a bit of a picture of what phones for You was like some years back. So I started at phones for You many years ago as a store manager. And as a store manager, I had this guy that worked for me called James. James was a really good salesman. He was the sort of guy that, you know, if you ever took him to parties, he'd have a circle of people around him laughing at all of his jokes, listening to all of his stories. He just had this real natural ability to build rapport. And I was really fortunate enough to have him work for me. He was able to upskill my team and make them all better at building rapport. And of course, that helped increase sales. Eventually, as time went by, my responsibilities increased and I was soon traveling around to different stores um, offering support. And what I really discovered was that in the stores that weren't doing so well, they didn't have a James. They didn't have somebody that was really good at building rapport, having conversations with customers. And consequently, their performance suffered as a result. So I knew that if I could put James in those poor performing stores for a short period of time, he could upskill the team and increase that store's profitability. So I did that for a while in stores that were nearby. However, that's not scalable. And to be fair, it certainly wasn't fair on James. So fast forward a few years and I'm in the L&D team. So this is my chance to make a change, right? Well, not quite. So we knew, found the research that led to various models such as 70-20-10 or the 3.33 pervasive learning model, that we knew that there were holes in our offerings. Our classroom learning was world class. We had an amazing off-site induction. We had amazing management development programs to upskill managers, enable them to become better coaches and manage effectively. But we didn't actually have nothing to support people on the job. Well, nothing great anyway. We didn't have anything that enabled the Jameses in these stores to share their talents and make the poor performing stores better. So with the backing of the leadership team, we looked to the industry for a solution. Now there were lots of companies offering the same kind of thing. You know the list. It wasn't about whether they were innovative within the industry. It was more that they just weren't doing anything in the enterprise environment that even closely resembled how people actually learn outside of the workplace. And then we came across Fuse. Fuse had all the traits of what we were looking for to enable social learning and the sharing of best practices and for us to be able to track it and evaluate upon it. But time has moved on and the way people learn has evolved. So Fuse were missing one key mandatory feature. The Nielsen Mobile Insights Survey of 2011, Q4, really told us a lot about how people were using YouTube and consuming video content. Smartphone access increased 74% compared to the previous year. And at the time, this correlated to smartphone sales in the UK. The smartphone versus desktop access was very similar. And obviously we're a few years on, so I can imagine mobile access has significantly increased. We were also able to go into the detail of when people were using YouTube the most, and the fact that 18% of people were actually using YouTube on their commutes to work during their downtime. And the final stamp on the decision for us was that 47% of people were specifically searching for content. So in other words, mobile wasn't just about being mobile. It was about being connected. It was about having access to content when you need it most. So it made sense to start our journey with Fuse and build an app together. We know that good ideas built on sound concepts fail all the time. The phrase, it was ahead of its time, does spring to mind. Well, to ensure failure doesn't happen, we needed to make the whole building process an engaged process with the people that would be using it. We needed to ensure that they were empowered from the start and part of the building process. So we ran surveys with the whole retail estate and selected a few regions and attended their managers meetings to understand their requirements and without putting words in their mouth, quietly influencing. Wouldn't it be great if we had an internal YouTube channel or something? That was the seed. All the information that came out of that then formed the app functional requirements for Fuse to then go and build, which, to be honest, was what Fuse already had on their web platform. Once the app had some form to it, we then attended a few more managers' meetings to reveal the concepts. We included deputy managers, the whole store management team, not just the top tier. And we said to them, 
Remember those surveys? Well, we started to build something and we think you'll like it. Tell us what you think. And the feedback was great. We had shown them some images of the app with a few elements missing and said, you know, it's not finished. We need you to help us define the categories or communities. Tell us what sort of courses and topics you want. They also raised other potential issues based on their current usage of WhatsApp and Facebook regarding notifications and the potential for misuse. And that was a really great help. We even asked them to name the app. <laughs> Fortunately, they wanted to call it Fuse, which was great for us because we had no marketing budget. Now, to be totally honest, we knew what they wanted already through surveys and store visits. So we were merely managing their perception. The name of the app was the only real control they had at that point. And we knew as they started to use it, how they would use it would define how it would be structured in the longer term. So between those meetings and the launch of the trial, we kept them informed via email. And the wordings of those emails were always friendly and personal. And in parallel, we had another bit of work going on in preparation. Fuse would only be as useful as the content it contained. So myself and my colleagues would be visiting stores that would be trialing the app and shot a few YouTube style videos covering those little tips and tricks that you would only get if you was actually having a chat with the people that actually did the job. And we were filming the people that did the jobs themselves. Now this was great because one, the content that we were recording was relevant and localized and two, it was of them. And of course, they wouldn't get to see their video anywhere else apart from Fuse. So as soon as we launched it, we knew that we was going to have a load of footfall. We were now ready to start watering the seed. We now needed to market the app. Our strategy was simple. The app has so many uses, but any good marketeer would tell you to keep it simple. Messages with a simple core message sticks. And the more familiar you can make it, the more it will stick. We can add to that message over time. So we came up with Fuse, your very own YouTube of knowledge. Now this message would help to ensure Fuse is in the right way. If it's not knowledge and it's not video, then it's not for Fuse, simple. But just in case that wasn't enough, we had another trick up our sleeve. You see, in most retail stores, you have the store selling, doing their thing, and then there's the head office function. And it's quite common in most retailers that the rules come from head office. So we use that to our advantage. We know the expectations would be that when people upload videos, uh, somebody centrally would have to authorize that video. So we went out with the message that you do the job day in and day out, you're the experts. Why should we approve your content? So we're gonna put our trust in you. We've built something that you wanted. We've made you part of the building process. So now it's your turn to continue that building process and to grow it. So now to our content strategy. So earlier I mentioned that Fuse would only be as useful as the content it contained. So we used the trial to facilitate more content, completely user-generated content, and we weren't disappointed. The whole business was bought into it. Our CEO got involved with some creative videos. Our HR team were empowered to create content. So you'll see from your home screen that there's two notifications here from Nathan Palmer, who's clearly requested some annual leave. So if I click on the first one, and the regions were using it as a tool to get together, real team building effort. What does the frog say? What the frog say? <laughs> so by getting the main bulk of users that were gonna be using this product involved before we started the trial, by having a solid and consistent marketing strategy and by building a shared set of values together, we ensured that through trust and empowerment, our people would train each other. So during the trial come launch day, 350 people had access and there were over 900 content views in one day. Within four weeks, we had just shy of 30,000 content views. That's a lot of unmanaged learning instances. We had just shy of 6,000 likes and comments. Finally, we can measure engagement. And we had over 500 videos, 64 of which were completely user generated. Now that is teaching each other. Now that was enough to end the trial and roll it out to the business. We then launched on November the 5th, 2013. We gave access to people that were yet to start their first day in the business so that they could pre-learn in time for Christmas. And here's a great example. One of our new people, before they started in their first day of the business, actually posted a question on Fuse, and our senior retail director answered it. Now that's Phones for You connected and engaged. 
We've now got some real talent come out of the woodwork too, and our manufacturing partners are also getting involved. Yeah. Hi, you're right. Um, I've tried to have a look, okay. but there seems to be nothing we can do. Is there anything you can do? Um, yeah, we can uh, web match it. Web match it? Web match it. What's that? I'll show you. Web match, baby. Web match, baby. Last week, a girl walked through the store, really upset about iPhone 4. She told me how she dropped it on the floor and since that day ain't working no more. I said, it's okay, come and sit down. She turned her frown upside down. She told me how she'd been shopping around and she told me about this great deal that she found. It was an iPhone, 5C, 4G, on EE. At £30 a month, she gets the phone for free. If I be honest, that deal wasn't known to me. But it's okay, I didn't panic. No need to do anything drastic. Cause I can do something fantastic. What's that then? Web match it. Web match, baby. So by the end of August, we had rolled Fuse out across our entire organisation. We had just over 7,000 employees on one platform. And in August alone, we had over 172,000 content views. That's 5,580 views per day. Total engagements for that month, 12,829. That's likes, comments and shares. And from when the trial started in October to the end of August, we had accumulated 1,605 completely user-generated videos. The bottom line benefits came in all shapes and sizes. For example, we had a guy called Nitin who worked in one of our stores in Reading. He came up with an amazing tip. Hi guys, I'm Nitin from Reading 315. And today I'm going to talk about how to find out the customer's buyout fee and the easiest way around doing it. The usual way of doing it is over the phone. As you could see, we hold the line for about 20 to 30 minutes, wait for the customer service advisor to tell us about the, the customer's termination fee. Now, there's the easiest way of doing it over the Internet. Now, if we go to the network website, as, for example, we go to O2's website, as you could see from the system, I'm over the O2 website on a live chat. That video consequently saved 30 minutes per transaction, which added £106,500 to the bottom line per day. And there were many examples of success. And these examples could not be predicted as part of a trial. They're simply an output of facilitating a culture of sharing best practice and creating a more engaged and connected organisation. So that's what happens when you trust and empower people to teach each other. Now there were many other parts of the journey that I could have shared, but I only wanted to focus on probably the most important parts of engagement and marketing. Now for those of you that want to operate the command and control style of learning and development and roll out slowly, that's fine. Fuse have all of those controls to do it. But for those of you that want to trust your people, I hope you have found my talk beneficial. Feel free to ask me any questions. I'm available on LinkedIn. Uh, just, just search for Tatum Bisley, or you can follow me on Twitter at Tatum Dale.